Well, welcome to the party. Um, so this is going to be a very like organic session. Um, I didn't put together a PowerPoint or anything like that. I really want this to be as much like what you would do for bliss time as possible. Uh, so it's going to be really like walking through the steps, what bliss time looks like. And then I will post in the Facebook event, a little like graphic, um, tomorrow that has, uh, just quick little reminders, questions to ask yourself, some suggestions, all of that will be in a nice little PDF for you to either leave on your computer or print off. It'll be super easy. Um, but yeah, so, um, so bliss time has a lot of different names to a lot of different people. This is just the one that felt good to me. Feel free to rebrand it for yourself. Uh, but basically, it is blank space on your calendar. And it's intentional blank space. So it's not, oh, I just happen to have this gap. Like, no, at the, when you're planning your week, you block off this blank time that is specifically dedicated to you. Um, I've heard these called retreat days. I've heard this called self-dates. I've heard this called many different things. Uh, as I really dove into it for myself. Um, but I recommend if you have not done bliss time before to start small and manageable. Just like any habit, I would rather you jump in and do little chunks of time that you can easily throw into your schedule and then build that out. Uh, for any new clients, this is one of the first tools that I give them. And basically it's just a request to put 15 minutes on your calendar that you do not plan anything. So 15 minutes where you just dedicate the time to you. And then what happens is whenever you enter that bliss space and that's what we'll go over tonight. Uh, I see this probably lasting just under an hour is my goal, but I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of time uh, to answer any questions that come up from all of this. Um, so how many of you, and you can put it in the chat or come off mute either way, um, how many of you have a, a self-care practice right now? Like how much time a week would you say that you devote to you? Go ahead and put an amount or a yes or no in the chat. Any, so how much time do you devote to yourself? I hear you. Yeah, it tends to be the last thing on the list. With everything else going on, it tends to be the last thing. I have also found, oh, that's so good. That's about what I do, Rachel. Um, about, yeah five hours a week, um, four of which I specifically call bliss. Um, anything more than that, I call self-care time, which we'll talk about the difference. Um, 30 minutes a day during the week. Yes, 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 yes. All day Saturday. So with bliss time, um, it is definitely for your self-care. That is the reason why I do it is to really pour back into myself and make sure I'm filling my cup up. However, I separate it because there's also self-care time that I schedule, like going to massage, getting Reiki, doing, going and getting my nails done. There's certain dedicated time that I do for that. Some other people's self-care time might look like TV time or video game time, whatever that looks like. But the difference there is I know what I'm doing with that time. I know that this is a spa date for me to, for self-care. Bliss time, again, you don't schedule anything. It is blank space. As I mentioned, I recommend starting with little 15 minute pockets that you can easily schedule within your week. A really good place to put these is at the end of your work day or um, like as a lunch reset, sometimes it's also super supportive. 
I started with two or three 15 minute blocks per week and now have a minimum of four hours that I schedule. It's not always all together. I also schedule at least one bliss day a month where I block off the day and don't schedule anything. So now that you like know that you're doing your bliss time, that time of day comes for me tonight. It was at 530. I took an hour of bliss time. At that point, you then go and you sit with yourself. This is the reason why this practice came up for me is I was already doing it. Like, okay, I need some meditation time. But as I was tuning into my body, it was telling me what it wanted. It was telling me what it needed. And I didn't always have the time after to dedicate to that. So that's what, that's what then allowed me to start building this out. So what you are looking for is anything, literally anything your body tells you. Sometimes my body says it wants pizza. Sometimes it's eating a whole pizza and that's okay. Sometimes it's taking a nap. Sometimes it's going for a walk. Sometimes it's just moving my body and having my own little dance party in my kitchen. It, it shifts, it varies. But one thing that you'll start to notice is that certain themes will keep coming up. So like this week, a lot of that bliss time has been napping. Not even going to lie. A lot of it has been, okay, I have an hour. Body, what do you need? Okay, you need a nap. And I take it. And the other very important part about bliss time is it is judgment free. Whatever comes out of that time, you get to have zero judgment on yourself. This is for you. It is completely for you and what you need. So take it. Love it. Use it. Also, recognize if judgment comes up. Because a lot of times what I found is that it has a direct correlation to your self-worth discussion. When I say self-worth discussion, I mean the talk you have with yourself on whether you're worthy of doing X, Y, or Z. Like, oh, okay, I blocked off this time and now my body's saying that it wants to nap. Why do I need to nap? I've slept eight hours last night. I'm feeling great. There's all these other things that I need to do. Napping just shouldn't be the thing. No, that's what your body asked for. And just like you would allow a partner to do that, if a partner came to you and was like, hey, let's nap for an hour. Great, great, let's do that. This is you honoring yourself, your body, your temple with whatever that is. As I said, sometimes that's eating food that might not be part of my diet. Granted, that doesn't happen very often, but sometimes that's exactly what your body needs to be like, okay, like I've been knocking this diet out of the park. Today, you get to reward yourself for that. So whenever you think of things that you run to whenever you're running on empty, what are those things for you? What are those things that whenever you feel like your cup is about to hit zero, that you go into to try to fill yourself back up? Could be anything. Eating out, yes. Naps, yes. Nature, uh-huh, uh-huh. And a lot of those times, a lot of the things that come up at this time too, once you start realizing your basic needs. So yes, naps were a huge one for me this week. I also have some health thing going, health things going on. So my body needed that. My body knew that I was not getting enough and it needed that to start that healing process. And with that being said, once I get through that and I have those basic needs met is when I start hearing other things like, okay, now, what I want to do is I want to journal. I want to get all these thoughts out that are in my head and throw them on paper. I want to go and eat at this new restaurant. I want to go and explore. So it can also be a really big indicator of the things that, are, that you are passionate about that bring you joy. So like Alicia said, nature, like, there's a good chance that there's something about nature that fills you up 
and should be a part of your normal practice. So recognizing one, what you're turning to um, now is probably a good thing, a good indicator of what you're gonna turn to whenever bliss time comes around. Um, and two, being open to what that could look like if you incorporated more of that in your normal day. Because just because it's something that comes up in this blank space in this bliss time, it doesn't mean it's not something you can schedule. Like I said, self-care days, sometimes those are scheduled. However, I've also had bliss days where I'm like, you know what, I wanna pay for my myself and I'll go over and get my nails done or I'll go and buy an, a meal that really fills me up. There are some overlap there, but it's all based on what you need in that moment. Also, um, with the bliss time, what you'll find is as you start adding in these little um, pockets of bliss, is what I call them, little pockets of bliss throughout your week, you'll find that you're also able to find those naturally. So um, I was on Facebook Live today and brought this up briefly, but the idea of, okay, my meeting got out 17 minutes early. It was supposed to go for a full hour. They gave us time back is what my, my managers love to say. Well, I'm gonna give you some time back. Now I know because I've done these little 15 minute pockets of bliss, now I know that there are things that I can call on whenever that time is presented to me. So yes, this was blocked. My calendar was blocked off. I have nothing else for the next 17 minutes. Okay, I know that if I go and I meditate for 10 minutes, I'm gonna feel a lot better about the rest of my day. So I can take that. I know that if I go on a, on a walk around my house, I'm gonna feel a lot better sitting in this next meeting for three hours. So you start recognizing where those things show up and recognizing that you can take that time for yourself too. But again, disclaimer, I don't want you to rely on that. I don't want you to rely on this time magically showing up in your day. It's the act of honoring yourself and knowing that you're worth taking that time for yourself. So whatever, whatever that looks like, um, I actually have a specific color that I block off my calendar with. I do it on my digital calendar. I do it on my personal calendar. I have a wall calendar that sometimes I block it on there too, if it's like a full day of it. Um, and I also, this is not something you write in pencil. Once you put it down, you don't change it. This was the hardest thing for me whenever I started doing this practice because my, what filled me up the most and still filled me up like crazy is hanging out with my nieces. Like I know whenever I go and spend time with them, I'm going to feel good about it after. Are there days where it completely drains me energetically? Yes, but the amount of joy and love that I walk out of that house with is unmatched. And whenever I started blocking this time, what I found was I'd get this cute little FaceTime call, cute little, cute little Snapchat call from this beautiful little girl named Grace. And she'd look at me with her cute little eyes and go, Mikkels, will you come over? The hardest little face to say no to. Hardest little face to say no to. And at the beginning, I did. Like, I'm not going to lie. At the beginning when I was starting to do it, it was really easy for me to be like, you know what? I think that is what my body would need without asking. I think that is what my body would need. Let me just go and hang out with Grace and Claire and and have that be my evening. Let me have some family time. But I wasn't asking. And then the next day would come and it would be a really long day. And I hadn't, I hadn't nourished myself the way that I needed to. I hadn't gotten that extra sleep. I hadn't, I hadn't, sometimes that also led to me forgetting to eat. Like I'm hanging out with them. Oh crap. Now it's, now it's the middle of the night and I probably shouldn't. Uh, so it's, it takes practice is, is my point. It takes practice to realize that this is the time that you, you get to have a powerful no, because your hell yes is the time for you. 
So again, I'm going to say that again. You get to have a powerful no. Like I got to look that sweet little girl in the eyes and say, no, I can't, I'm busy. And guess what? Nobody really ever asks. If they're like, hey, can you do something on Friday at five o'clock? And I look at my calendar and that's part of my bliss time. And I say, no, a lot of times people just ask for a different time. Like, oh, okay, great. Can we do it this other time? Or I can propose another time. Like, no, I'm busy from five till six. Can we do it at seven? Can we do it tomorrow? Can we do it next week? And being able to create that win-win situation. Because you get to have this time for yourself. You get to have this time to really check in and see what you need. Because a lot of times we go, 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 especially whenever we're trying to run a business or start something new or do a training or coach and we pour all of ourselves out and into it and stay in action and stay in the go. And then all of a sudden life slows down a little bit and you're exhausted and your cup is empty and you don't know what to hit you. So these check-ins are really to look at, to look at your cup. There are a few different stages of this self-worth cup. So the self-worth cup is where it is filled with joy and happiness. And when it's full, that's the, all the good stuff. Joy, happiness, passion is all inside of that cup. And what depletes it is whenever you're giving all of that to somebody else and not taking some for yourself. So the first step with your cup is just filling it up, knowing how to fill your cup up. And again, whenever you are doing your bliss time, the bliss time is, is going to be helping you identify what does that. Because your body's going to tell you. You just got to listen. Like, oh, this is what I need to get back to full. This is what I need. And at the end, if you aren't totally feeling full, like look at your calendar and block more time. Because that's, that's the freedom that you have. So to start your bliss time, the first goal is like, okay, let me figure out how I can fill my cup up. That also makes this a really, really vital tool for me whenever I'm going into a strenuous activity. Either I'm traveling for work for a couple days, I'm training, I'm coaching, whatever that looks like. I also use this as a tool to set myself up ahead of time so I don't feel the, the drag that normally comes after it if I don't. So great. I know that there's a big training weekend this weekend. I know I'm going to be pouring myself into it all weekend long. What can I do tomorrow night to prepare myself to be able to do that all weekend? How can I fill up my cup? So I, that's normally when I block the bigger bliss time chunks is to lead into that. As you do this more and more, you're going to start to know what a full cup feels like. And everybody's full cup feels different. For me, I get all light and bubbly and I feel super good whenever my cup is full and I know it. I also feel way more aware of what my hell yes and my hell no's are <laughs> because I, I know that I am fulfilled and I'm like, okay, how do I want to use this energy? Where do I want to go with this? What is next? Then, so one, learning how to fill up your cup Two, knowing what a full cup feels like. And then the third one is, okay, now I'm going to overfill my cup. I'm going to be an overflow. So I know that going into this huge activity or going into my week or, hey, maybe it's just going into your day and, and cooking and being a mom and doing all the mom things and running your house and managing your bills. That can be a day. And you just, this is your way of being like, okay. All my needs are met. Let me go over the top so I can give all this extra to somebody else. Then you're never dipping below and trying to get yourself back up. It is a lot easier to live your life with a full cup. And 
by you doing that, you're giving your family and your friends permission to do the same because they're like, oh, what does Kelsey have? Like, why is she always so energetic? Why is she always doing these things? Because I, because I know what this level is for me and I stay there. And it's like a huge siren whenever I start going below that. I can feel it. I know that my body doesn't feel as giddy and light. And ultimately the goal of this too is that you get to a point because you're honoring your bliss time with yourself that you then will set boundaries on how you spend your time with others because you know what you like, you know what you don't like, you know what takes your energy and you can set those boundaries. And that is like the top tier of everything. Like, okay, I know it that well that Whenever my sister calls after a week of working ridiculous hours and she asks if I can come over and babysit, I know that that's, that that's a no. I know that I know that I can't, that that won't serve me and that pouring out of myself whenever I'm already like operating right at the cusp of my cup is going to mess up the rest of my weekend versus being that thing that just pours back into me. So what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm gonna go ahead and have you close your eyes for a second. I'm gonna walk you through what this quick check-in looks like whenever you're starting your time. So you blocked it off on your calendar, you're getting into it. And what I'm gonna have you do is go ahead and take a Big, deep breath in and let it out. I'm going to have you another take, take another big, deep breath in to fill yourself up. And let it out. And then one more big, deep breath in. Really feel it fill up your body and let that out. Now, I want you to get a to really tune in to your body and where are you feeling tension? So start at your head, the crown of your head, feel into that space and work your way down like you have a waterfall over you. And as the water from that waterfall hits different areas on your body, going from your head to your shoulders, go ahead and release that tension. Go ahead and go down to your chest and your stomach and your arms, releasing all of that tension. Then down through your legs and your knees. And then let it all just go right into the ground. Let it go, let all of that tension and energy go into the ground to then be recycled. Now that you're completely grounded in you and in your space, ask, body, what do I need? Body, what would bring me joy right now? And have you take another deep breath in, let it out. One more deep breath in, and let it out. And one final deep breath in to really feel into yourself and nourish yourself and let it out. And then whenever you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes and let me know what came up for you. What was that thing that immediately remember zero judgment of what that was like what was that thing that came up you're, you're like this is what I need whatever that thing was and a lot of times that that just brief check-in breathing exercise will let you know 
where where you're at and if your cup has been empty and what would fill that up yes dog snuggles being around people and family feel a sense of anxiousness Bethany yeah yeah I mean it takes practice to figure out what that is and that's the cool thing about having this time too is if you get into it and you haven't practice that enough and you aren't clear about what your body needs, you can try something and then end your session with the same breathing exercise of really breathing and nourishing yourself, feeling into your body um, and where your tension is held. Because a lot of times that'll also tell you something. If you're feeling a lot of it in your head, that like that anxiety versus your chest versus your back, like wherever you carry that for yourself, um, take a gauge before you do your bliss time and where you're at and then after and see if what the activity that you did serves you. Like, did that, did that help? Where, where are my tension levels before and after? How full is my cup? Did I go from 30% to 50%, 50 to 80? What was that jump for you? And really grounding in that. It's also good eyes and shoulders. That makes sense with your, with anxiety. A lot of times we hold that tension up here. And what it sounds like to me and what it feels like to me is that you get to get out of your head. That what you need is to get out of whatever that energy is of your anxiousness and just escape it for a little bit. Um, I recommend doing something creative. So a lot, so a lot of us, especially if you work in the corporate realm, um, get stuck in that very masculine structure, logical side of our brain. And that's what we work in all day to get what we need to get done and to get the bills paid and to get everything met. So this time to release that is to get out of that and to use your feminine flow and to use that other side of your brain that will allow you to get creative and explore and have fun. And also, so bliss time is time for you, as I mentioned. However, like Jessica said, if you go into this and you're like, what I need is interaction, then do that. Like maybe Bethany, it's you doing this exercise with your son and doing something creative and doing a crafts project or going out and trying something new. And maybe that's exactly what you need to, to just shift and relieve some of that tension on your go, go, go. Does that make sense for you, Bethany? Does that... Yes, it's definitely about taking that step back. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So again, this is something that you can, that is meant for you to pre-plan. I have planning sessions every Sunday where I go in and I sit down and one of the first things, and one of my non-negotiables that go on my calendar every week is my bliss time. So I want to encourage you guys over the next two weeks to take a minimum of two hours of bliss time. If this is something that's already part of your practice, I want to encourage you to either double that time and do four hours in bigger chunks. So two hour blocks of you doing something. And I want to, want to encourage you also to take time to try something new just to see what that is. So try something new that is outside your comfort zone that you've been wanting to try and haven't um, and see what that see whether that activity fills you up more or if you're just kind of left the same or if it pulls from your energy because those can be really cool indicators too. And then in two weeks, I am doing another workshop where we will go through uh, planning your week and increase, it's called Productivity Boost. 
Um, basically, we'll walk through how do you structure your week so that you can be as potent as possible, as easily as possible. That's the biggest thing for me. If it's not easy, I won't keep doing it. If it is not easy and it does not fill me up, I will not keep doing it because that's a disservice to myself. So two weeks on the 23rd, same time, we will go in and we will, we will look at how to build your schedule, what, how to have one of those planning dates with yourself and what that looks like for you. Uh, that one, the time will be blocked from seven till nine, probably won't take that long, but I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware because that is the next step is really making sure that your schedule is built up for you. Um, how do you separate bliss time with to do things that are constantly floating in your head? So you treat those to do things like clouds. You notice them, you acknowledge them, and you tell them you'll revisit them later. It also can be um, really beneficial to have a sheet of scrap paper with you whenever you're doing that um, meditation so that when those things come up, you can write them down and really get them out of your head. Just be like, okay, here are the things that I, that I still need to do. And trust that the, this next 15 minutes, hour, two hour, however much time you blocked is going to make you able to do those things more easily because you have taken care of yourself. If we took care of our minds like we took care of our bodies, we would be so much better off. And this is step one. When we break a bone, we don't just let it hang there and be like, oh, you know what? I'll get to that later. However, it has become common practice in our society that when something either super stressful or traumatic or a feeling that we don't want to feel comes up, we stuff it and we move on. Think of that just like a bruise on your brain. Like you're not, you wouldn't leave a concussion unattended to. So this is the time for you to really mend yourself and keep yourself whole so that you're, you're able to go and do those to do things after. Does that, does that make sense, Bethany? So really just pour them out, set them on a parking lot for them for later and just focus on you. Yeah, this is also, and I'll talk about this a little bit more um, in two weeks, but this is also something that I like to do before I go to bed is do a brain dump. Um, I got this from the book, The Joy of Missing Out by Tanya Dalton. Basically, you have a, P a notepad by your bed. I honestly, like, real, like, don't make it at this really nice notebook. That's not what this is for. <laughs> like a notepad that you set by your bed and before you go to sleep or lay down or try and sleep, you just write down everything. Like, oh, here are all the things that are now popping into my head because I've slowed down and I remembered that I didn't do this or I should have done that. And you write them down and then you go to sleep or you start whatever your evening routine is without those things there. And I promise you the list will be there tomorrow. I promise. And then tomorrow you can look at that list and be like, okay, is this still something I need to do? Is this something I can delegate to somebody else? Or is this something that I need to get done and I can knock it out right now first thing so I don't have to worry about it the rest of the day? So I highly, highly recommend that. Just get it out of your head. Forget about it. It's the same thing I do when I enter in my planning sessions. Like, what's everything that I know that I need to do? Like, let's just write it all down on a piece of paper so I know I can schedule time for it. Um, so yeah. So that's from The Joy of Missing Out by Tanya Dalton. Love the book, read it twice. Uh, also has some great like uh, supplemental content with it, like videos and worksheets and things like that. She did a really good job at that. So highly recommend. Um, recommend actually getting the printed version. I have the Audible, but just having the book and being able to mark it up is huge for that one. Uh, another good book for that is 
the lazy genius way. I'm reading that right now. And it also has some really, really good um, productivity tips and adding ease to your life, which is my goal. Like, again, if it's not easy, I don't want it. If it's not easy, I don't want it. And I'm going to let somebody else do it. Because what's not easy for me could be super easy for somebody else. There you go. Cool. So is there any questions? Any questions at all? Or anything that's coming up for you that you want to talk through, like this is the space for it. I will say, obviously, this is being recorded. It's going to be shared in that um, Facebook event. So you can always go back and watch it later. Also, people who are not here are going to watch it as well. So if there's anything you want to ask me privately, like definitely do that. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that I left some time to open it up to you guys. Or if there's anything that you guys have found through your self-care time, and for those of you who have done bliss time through your bliss time, that has been extra supportive that you think would be worth somebody else knowing. What's worked for me, Kelsey? It took a long time to change my habits, but putting the bliss time in the morning or the evening with like worked into my routine. Like I read at night now before bed and it also is like setting me up for sleep. So anytime something has a double purpose or sometimes even more than a double purpose, like talking about the ease thing or the yeah. like bang for your buck, like I'm like, yes, that. Yeah, yeah. And that that is something that's definitely been true for me too is the like once I noticed something always coming up, like journaling, that was a huge one for a while that I just realized I just needed to dump everything in my brain out. And Bethany, like with you saying about not being sure where you were at, sometimes that's just where you need to start. Like if I don't know, that's the first place I go. I set a five minute timer. I journal, 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 journal. The alarm goes off. Great. And I still have things I need to put down. I keep going. A lot of times there'll be a little tidbit that keeps coming up. If the alarm hasn't gone off yet and you're still struggling, keep writing until, until it stops and just take a step back and see what it is and then go from there. Hi, Alicia. Oh, hi. Um, one thing that I found that was just a cool shift for like making sure that as I'm building this in my routine, it's something that I want to do even when I know it's good for me, like there are definitely days when I'm like, but I got to do the other things instead and I'll feel better, but like I go through those conversations. So one thing that was a really big game changer for me to like be in integrity with myself to take this time is to set a space for it. And so making sure the space is somewhere that I have cozy things, that the lighting feels good. I've got plants. Um, but also like generally feeling the energy of the room of like, what is the energy of this space? And if it doesn't work for what my intention is here, can I shift it? Um, and what that actually turned into was like finding the feng shui of my entire house so that when I take my time for me, it's not as structured as it has to be in a specific place, but I can do it. Like I can have that, um, I don't know, like essence of the room anywhere in my house yeah. because of this practice, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I know that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. One thing that I always do, to, like whenever I'm doing that kind of breathing to start it, I either, I either do it like laying down somewhere where I can just really relax and get out of wherever I'm at, but I also have my meditation space that has been a huge tool for it. Also, because I really set up that space with the intention of, Hey, anything I need to know, anything I need to be aware of, anything I need to hear, this is the space for it. Like, this is the space that I just, nothing comes in. Nothing else comes in. What do I need? Um, so that's been huge. And a lot of those things, like you said, like the pillow and the journal, I can take anywhere. So if for some reason, that's not, I'm not feeling that like, great. I have it with me. And having that, 
also one thing I'm trying to do is have a journal dedicated to that versus notebooks all over the place. <laughs> So that I then I can go back and be like, oh, you know what? This came up a week ago during my bliss time. Good to know. Probably should look at that again. But there's a lot of tools that go into it too. Um, and you'll start to learn them for yourself as you really dedicate that time for it. And again, start small. If it's not something that you're used to doing, blocking that white space, like start small. Whatever feels good to you and then build it up. Um, and then let me know how it goes. Like, let me know what you're finding out and what has served you and what has not, because I know how much it has, has like filled me up and how much it has allowed me to really acknowledge and appreciate my own worth because I'm like, no, this is what I get to do. Like step one, I'm owning my time and this is how I'm going to do it. And then step two, I'm managing my time, which two weeks back here, same place different Zoom link. Um, and we'll talk about what that looks like. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Perfect. <laughs> and again, if anything comes up, I tend to have this effect on people that once you spend some time with me, on a specific subject, it just keeps coming up in your week. So if there's anything that comes up for you that you guys wanna talk through or any questions that arise as you're going into or coming out of your bliss time, uh, just reach out. That's what I'm here for, that's what I'm here for. And hopefully I'll see all your lovely faces next week and we won't have any conflicts with, with our community. Uh, and we'll go from there. Thank you guys so, so much. Thank you, Kelsey.